We're about to stop the Mac Attack Show. I'm Clyde Cool Mac Daddy, VP for Athletics and Recreation, a proud member of the CIAA. My lovely partner today on this broadcast is Jackie, J. Mac Mick Williams, the commissioner of the CIAA. The Mac Attack is an uptown, downtown, crosstown walk inside and outside of the CIAA, the Brazilian CIAA. J. Mac, who we got on the show today. Hey, Clyde Mac. So, as you all can tell, we're really excited about having you two on our show today. We've got Bianca Lachmi from Virginia Union University, one of our student athletes, amazing student athlete, also the president of the SAC at Virginia Union. So thank you so much for being here. And then we've got our amazing coach, Charde Swan. Um, just real excited to have both of these um, women, for me, the women on here that we <laughs> to talk to you. Coach Swan, you've had so much success as a student athlete, but now as a coach and leading your program. And so, Clyde, we're going to have a really good time. You guys, this is really for us to connect with you, to make you smile, and to make us all feel better during a time of isolation. This is six weeks yes. in the house, and I need to see people. So I'm sending you a big hug, but we're really thrilled to be with you two today. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having us. So let us start off. So how are you both doing? Let's start with our student athletes. You know, Bianca, you, look, you're an amazing, incredible woman. Um, I've watched you play. I've watched the energy and how you lead your team. You have an incredible team. You have an amazing coach. You're at one of the institutions I started my coaching career at. And so really proud to see just you transition from another school. You chose Virginia Union. How's it going for you? How's your teammate, teammates? How, how are you feeling? Um, I mean, it's unfortunate that we have to... We have to be in the house under these some circumstances. But me and my teammates, I check up on them like all the time. Everybody's doing well. We talk to each other often. So it's been it's been okay. We just can't see each other. So that's the bad part about it. Yeah. Is there anything fun you guys have been doing since, you know, I know you might be doing your own individual workouts and that kind yeah. of thing to stay healthy, but um, what are you doing to just keep a peace of mind together? Yeah. Well, for me, I'm, I've kind of tapped into some hobbies that I didn't know that I had. So <laughs> I started, um, one of my teammates, uh, she's graduating now, but um, she's actually had me painting. Didn't know I could paint, so I started painting. Um, mm. My mom has got me to, like, knit. I don't know. Knitting is a new <laughs> thing for me now. So Those basic skills, we should all know how to sew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I really just getting into different hobbies and stuff. I mean, I, I started a garden outside with my dad, like just mm -hmm. little things around the house. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But Swan, how are you been feeling, and how's your student athletes doing? But first, how are you and your family doing? Um, we're doing pretty well. Um, you know, at the time that this all came about, I was kind of a little heartbroken. But then when I got home and I was able to get some rest, I was kind of relieved at the same time. <laughs> um, I was able to actually rest my mind, relax, just take a step back from basketball. But now I'm ready to get back to it, of course. Yeah. Um, and I'm able to spend some much needed time with my son. Um, during the season, I'm away from him so much. And now it's, you know, he's with me every single day. Yeah. <laughs> he's running around, keeping me busy. Um, student athletes, they're doing well. I check on them periodically. We have, have weeks meetings um they have push-up challenges going on so I um you know to, to keep that camaraderie and I've picked up on some skills as well I'm cooking all of the time um <laughs> trying to perfect the craft because we eat all so much during the season you know hopefully it'll help me shed a few pounds <laughs> and I'm also um I have this headband on because I, I did my own hair. I don't want to show you all what it looks like, but that's something that I'm working on during this time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look, I think we're all learning our own different uh, crafts personally, cooking wise, you know, those things that we don't have normally to do because we're in athletics and we're constantly moving and going. I know it's been great talking to Clyde. Clyde and I talk often and, um, and we're just trying to keep up with what everybody's doing. And we're trying to maintain ourselves administrators and try to lead you as best as we can. And Clyde, you know, I mean, you have amazing coaches under you and just trying to keep them driven and keep them going as well. But as leaders, I think we're trying to figure out our own different crafts and skills right. we have inside. Right, Clyde? Absolutely. 
And this is a time where, you know, I talk about adversity. Adversity will make you or break you. And we can bend with adversity, but it can't ever, ever break us. So this is a time we come together. The two of you have already alluded to that. Things that you could never do when you're a student athlete and a coach, you know, <laughs> the things you're doing at home and finding the time. Bianca, you talk about a uh, privilege to play in the CIAA. What does that really mean to you? Well, <laughs> it actually, it, it, means, it means a lot. Um, as most people know, like I, I started at UVA Wise, so I was away from my family. I'm, I originally stayed in North Carolina. So the fact that I could come back and play in front of my family and my friends, that means a lot. And just like the, the atmosphere of the CIAA, it's amazing. I just love it. And you Coach Go, go ahead. You started off at uh, HBCU, went to a PWI, and now you're back coaching it in an HBCU. What does this HBCU experience mean to you? Um, honestly, when I first came to Bowie, it kind of made me regret my, my decision of leaving the HBCU because I was like, oh, man, this is everything that I missed out on. But, I mean, I love it. Um, I've had support since the day that I've come to Bowie. Um, the student athletes are amazing. The family atmosphere and I love the CIAA conference because I have support, not just within my institution, but from all of the coaches in the conference, pretty much. Um, it's just a family-oriented environment. Everyone, even though we battle out on the court, coaching against each other, everyone supports one another off of the court. Yeah, you know, Coach, I, um, you know, as I've watched you and, you know, transition into coaching, being assistant coach and having success, but then being the head coach. I think we were so excited when mm -hmm. I was able to make you the head coach there. Um, and you had, um, you know, you had to create a culture for yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How is it, you know, being in this distance or even the things that you've done to continue to create that balance of culture for yourself and your student athletes while you're not together? I mean, you have your rules of just engagement on what's mm -hmm. important. And so what are you finding in, in, in your own, I guess, philosophy of being away, but still having to lead these young women? Um, well, as a coach um, outside of basketball, one of my biggest uh, philosophies is just to let my players know that I care um, about them. So one of the things that I do is make sure that I check on them. And it's not always about basketball. Um, just check on their well-being, let, letting them know that I'm available. Even though we don't get a chance to see each other every day, I'm available. I don't care what time of day it is. You can reach out to me, whether it's regarding um, basketball, if it has something to do with your classes, if it's, if it's something personal. I'm just make myself available. And um, I think that's really important because a lot of times, when you don't see your players, it's easy to just say, you know, just that distance, the distance between the two of you or the team, the coach and the team is um, easily there. But I just try to reach out to them as often as possible. Um, even as, if it's just a text to say, hey, I'm thinking about you guys, can't wait to see you all. Um, just let them know that, you know, it's bigger than basketball for me. Um, I actually care about them as individuals, as student athletes. And that Coach Swan is always going to be here for them regardless. Yeah. Hey, Bianca, um, as a SAC president, you're an influencer to and a role model to your student athletes. Tell us a little bit about that. And tell us a little bit about the influencers who influence you and are a role model and who are your role models. <laughs> yes. So um, I'll start with my role models. Um, is one of my role models. That is just a lovely woman. I mean, when I first met her, she was just amazing. So she's definitely one of my role models. I mean, my mom, my grandmother, um, I look up to them and just how they like treat me is kind of like how I treat my teammates. Like my teammates always call me the grandma or the mother of the team. <laughs> so I'm always like trying to keep everything together and stuff like that. So those are my role models. Um, I would say as an influencer, um, at Union, we're lucky enough to have um, two or three athletes from each team to represent their team. So um, I use, we, re we reach out to them, make sure they're reaching out to their teammates. If any athletes have stuff that they want to do as like we're home and stuff, we try to do it. Um, there are um, separate group chats that we have. Um, me and my vice president talk all the time. So she, she really, she, she does everything that I needed to do. Um, she reaches out to the athletic directors, anything that we need, like she does it. So 
I mean, just say like, I helped, I helped try to influence other people because my vice president is younger than me. So she's going to be in my position when I leave. Wow, trainer, you like training, like, you know, we talk about that in leadership, like it's our job to train the next, you know, Coach Swan, Mm -hmm. you're training your assistant to be the next, you know, Mm -hmm. as a student athlete, you know, if you're the captain, you're training the next. And so there's something said about, you know, the style of leadership that you're learning, you know, Mm -hmm. from leaders and all the women in your life who are influencing, um, influencing you. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach Swan, what, what's your, when we come out of this COVID situation, what's going to be like your first 30 days back on campus? What would that kind of look like for you? Uh, <laughs> my first 30 days? I don't know. You know, honestly, I've never missed work so much. So I'll probably just stay there all day trying to find <laughs> you know, I'll run around campus saying hello and having conversations with everyone. Just, um, hold on, hold on. Is this the same time she needs a break? Uh, is, this, is this the same coach that comes in my office and tells me she needs a break and has to go home? <laughs> but, you know, we take for granted those relationships that we have with um, people on campus. So, you know, we are so busy behind the computer just sending emails, um, making phone calls. But I think I'll actually see those individuals face-to-face just to reconnect to see how everyone is able to get it through this time. And hopefully we can give everybody a hug, right? We can give everybody a hug back then. Yes, <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Uh, so, unfortunately, I didn't play this year due to an injury. And when all this kind of, like, happened, I was supposed to start getting back in the gym. But, unfortunately, like, all the gyms closed. So, I know one of my main things is just going to get back in the gym, whether that's just by myself or with some of my teammates in Richmond. It really doesn't matter to me. That's just one main thing that I'm really excited to do. Yeah, you just want to play. Yes. I see your minor is Spanish. You speak Spanish? (laughs) (laughs) So I I took Spanish at UVA Wise, and I was like, my professors were saying, um, I think you should minor in it since you're a biology major and stuff like that. And I really, I told him, no, I'm like, I don't think I can learn another language. I mean, I just have to take it because I needed to graduate or whatever. <laughs> but, but we actually went to a, um, my first year union, we went to Florida to play. And while we were staying in the hotel, my teammates needed things from the housekeepers and people who worked at the hotel. And unfortunately, a lot of them didn't speak English like we did. So my teammates were like, Bianca, I mean, you don't know it as fluent, but just try to like talk to them or whatever. So I went and I, I kind of know a little broken Spanish. Like it's not all, it's not all the way fluent, but yeah, I do know a little bit. It's a little broken though. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, good with, you know, Clyde, you know, we're going to wind down here. We've got two other guests that are coming up, but I want to make sure Any advice you would give to anyone right now, whether it's a coach or your students or your 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 teammates or your coach? I mean, anything that you guys would give us advice on what to do in the now opposed to wait, worried about tomorrow? Um, I would say just live in the moment, like Mr. Dowdy always says, or Clyde always says, live in the moment. Don't be too anxious to get back outside. I think right now is just important for everyone to put their health first. Um, Like we all talked about, there are other things that we can do in the house that we didn't know. Um, I've been reading books, just trying to, you know, just learn and stimulate my mind. So I would say just take advantage of the time that we have off. All of us need rest. So take advantage of that as well. Um, and just, you know, continue to check on your teammates, check on your family, and just make sure that everyone is doing well. And then once this is over, remember it and, you know, make it a priority to spend time with your loved ones and your friends because we often get so caught up in our own situations that we forget about the ones that we care about. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, indeed. Now is the moment that never ends, and I'm glad that both of you ladies are in the now. <laughs> doing what y'all do and continue to do what you do. Thank you for being on the Mac Attack show. We appreciate you. Stay safe out there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Big hug to you. Can't hold you, but big hug. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, yo. We're back with the Mac Attack show. And 
Jay Mack, who do we have on the second half of our show? On the second half, we've got one of our amazing coaches, Cleo Hill from Winston-Salem State University. Cleo Hill Jr., that is, uh, just came off a CIAA championship. Um, just an incredible human being, um, an individual person. Just so glad to have him back. And he left us for a minute, and we got him back in the CIAA family. And so, Coach Hill, welcome to the Mac Attack Show. This is just a show that we created because we're true Mac <laughs> in the CIAA. <laughs> and really wanted to connect with our family during this time. CIAA is a family, and so we're so proud of you and all the successes that you've had since you've been at Winston. And so thanks for joining us this afternoon. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. First of all, let me say 100% thumbs up on the name Mac Attack. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful. <laughs> so, Coach Hill, what is it like to – have left the CIAA, come back to CIAA, and have the success that you're having right now, because we're very happy to have you back in the fold. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm happy to be back. Um, I, like you said, I did leave for a little bit. I ventured into the, the world of player development um, and actually loved it, but my best client were my two kids. Uh, but it was, it was an interesting profession to dive into for about two years uh, smart let smart reps elite basketball training uh, was the name um, I did kind of keep track on a, on a on a few years probably more 2016 and 17 I kind of weighed in on the championships game and uh, I admired the growth um, that the CIAA made in just two years after me leaving and uh, when I got the opportunity to come back um, it was it was one thing coming back to the CIAA, but then it was it was another thing coming back to or rather going to Winston Salem State University, uh, where my father walked the campus and uh, eventually uh, met his college sweetheart, my mother there, uh, oh, and they married. And the, the very thought of my conception started on those <laughs> on those campus walks. So it was great to have that combination of being at Winston-Salem State and being back into the CIAA. That's awesome. You know, Coach Hill, um, I watched you um, after you guys won the championship, and there was so much emotion there, you oh. know. And I don't think it was just from winning the conference championship. I mean, I think some of it is just the legacy and the history and just the hard work in these young men that you get to coach. Um, but can you share a little bit about that feeling and emotion? Because not everybody can win a championship. And when you do, there's something special about it and it's not just the game i think when we win championships in the ciaa it's so the emotion is so far beyond just winning the game right right believe it or not jackie we we talked a lot about uh leaving charlotte and going to maryland we that was something that we really wanted to do look let's be the last team to win in charlotte and, and let's let this be our decade to usher in Maryland. Um, and that was kind of a theme throughout the probably the last two weeks of the season. Um, and the emotion that you saw from, from everyone was, you know, I mean, it's probably different for each player and maybe even each coach, like our senior and the MVP, Robert Colon, that, that signifies something that he talked with his grandfather about. Um, winning the CIAA tournament as he passed earlier that, that, that previous season. Um, so that was something for him. Uh, and then, of course, myself, um, you know, Coach Gaines being my mentor. And, and like I said, you know, my father being one of the great players that played there. And my first idol of basketball was Earl Monroe. And I had to really gather myself before the game because Earl called on the cell phone probably about a half an hour mm. before the game. And, uh, you know, I had to do a pregame with my guys and I was a mess. <laughs> so I had to gather myself and a couple of guys asked if everything was okay. And I had to explain to them like, look, you guys idolized Iverson, Kobe Bryant. I said, for me, that was my Iverson on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Wish, wishing yeah. me luck um, yeah. and giving yeah. good words. So, and then, of course, our, our chancellor and, and chief, 
uh, Chancellor Robinson. We we wanted to win for him too, um, because he's been such a great chancellor, has so much support. And then we also wanted to usher in our athletic yeah. director, A.D. Yeah. Thomas, and, and start her Ram career off with, with the bang. So a lot of emotion going on there, definitely. Yeah. Hey, Coach, you, know, you talk about a, a, a profound legacy that has been impactful for your life. Your father, and Earl, and, and all the other great people that have walked the campus of uh, Winston-Salem. And, and a, a lot of young people don't know about the legacy of your father, even, even Earl Monroe. Could you, could you tell us a little bit more about about your dad and, and, and his greatness and what he meant to you uh, and, and Earl as well? Well, I, I mean, it's it's a couple of different stories. Uh, Earl Monroe goes back to him being my, my idol with the Baltimore Bullets. And I was really, really young when he was with the Baltimore Bullets. Um, and then having a chance to meet him at a cookout at my home when he first came to the Knicks was just like... <laughs> It was it was really unbelievable, um, and a lot of my godparents were Rams. Uh, don't ask me how I ended up becoming an Eagle. Uh, I enjoyed that time there, <laughs> but a lot of my roots really come from from Winston Salem. Um, and uh, when I when I first realized my father was who he was was probably in the seventh grade. You know, a one on one game happened in the back with him and somebody else, and. I guess he, he had to be in his mid 40s. Um, and he put on a display against a, a high school All American and ended up breaking my backboard in the backyard on the game winning point, which started me to say, Who, <laughs> who is this guy? So I, <laughs> I kind of ventured, ventured downstairs in some, of the, in some of the scrapbooks. And then that's when I kind of learned that, you know, he wasn't just dad, um, he was actually a pretty good ball player himself. Um, and over that course of time, being in middle school, I did get a chance to meet Coach Gaines when I was younger. And, uh, you know, just the, just all of the roots and, and how actually Coach Gaines and, and even other coaches within the league, like Harvey Hartley and Coach Christian, you know, I met all of these people through my dad and my mother. Um, so it was, it was no doubt where I was going to go to school at uh, in terms of conference it just was a matter of what team um because i knew so much history of the league before i even got there um that i really had no choice yeah i really had no choice to become a product yeah you know coach it's um you know as you mention all the names and you know and you kind of talk about you know i i wasn't born into the ciaa i chose to go to hampton and but all those coaches were there from Norfolk State coach all the way, St. Paul's coaches. I mean, and what I found as a student athlete, even though I was co work, um, a player for Coach Sweat my freshman year, and then Tiny Laster the, the entire the rest of the time, that all the coaches were a community and a family themselves, right? The John B. McClendons were, they were normal to us. So when people talk about legacy and like you said, the Iversons and the Jordans and all that, they were good, but to us, I mean, we didn't even know we were walking around history and legends. And right. so the feeling of that and the emotional part of being a part of this conference and knowing the history, for me, it's been a lot of reflection the last six weeks. I reflect all the time, but probably like you, to really, um, you know, make sure that we're not taking for granted all this great historical foundation that was made for us for you to play you know at central and even to coach back at winston-salem is pretty incredible i say yeah. right no it is and I, I think and i can't speak for all of the coaches but we we try at winston-salem state to do a good job in, in, in talking about the history uh first of, of winston-salem state university um and, and it's rich, rich history and you know, the names are endless from Winston-Salem State, but we even try to educate on on the conference um, and let them know that a lot of great people within sports and outside of sports have, have come out of this conference. So uh, I, I thought about a lot of it uh, when I had a chance to reflect on the ride back, uh, riding down the road back to Winston-Salem, just, uh, just all of the, the great names um, and great history that followed this tournament, and now uh, we are we are enshrined in that yeah. list of 
of teams and, and coaches and players that that won the championship. Um, and I try to talk to my players about it. And some of them um, are sponges and they want to know more about the history. And, and some can't can't phantom it. Uh, when I bring up names like John McClendon, and, you know, even my coach, you know, legendary as, as he is, uh, Mike Bernard, one of the few CIAA coaches who won a national championship. Yeah. You know, we have been on that stage as 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 a university went to Salem, but then as a, as a conference, you know, Virginia Union has I think they've won one in every decade since the '70s. Yeah. Um. So we try to push that to our players as much as possible, um, to let them know that we we can be on that level. It can be done. Um. It's not impossible. Um. And from there, from the court to the classroom and beyond, that we can become great. Um, like even even now, one of our very own as a as an institution and as a conference, Stephen A. Smith is almost the face of ESPN. Um, so a lot of things can be accomplished from from being in this conference and being an HBCU product. Yeah. Hey, coach, you talk about players and your peers. How are you guys doing during this uh, period of isolation, COVID-19? Are you keeping up with your peers and how are you doing with your players? We're doing great. Uh, we're trying to practice what whatever is coming out. Um, social distancing, uh, wearing masks, gloves. We try to check in with our players. Let me just say this: I'm I'm all zoomed out. So when I saw, when well, I thank saw you for joining us today. Team, <laughs> I was like, wow, it's, it's it's still video, but at least it's not Zoom. Yeah. Um, but we've been keeping in contact. With, with our players via, via Zoom, phone, email, text messages, um, as well as our staff. Um, you know, we've been having quite a few staff meetings um, and just making sure everyone is safe, number one. And number two, just keeping everybody abreast of what's going on because eventually we're going to come out of this. Um, and then there's, there's going to be grades talked about. There's going to be eligibility. We're going to be talk, talking about... Uh, registration for dorm rooms and and we're going to come out of it and when we do we just want to be prepared that's why we've been meeting so often we, we want to be prepared when we finally come out of this um that we're not at ground zero trying to play catch up in every area yeah coach what what challenges are you seeing your student athletes having or if any well <laughs> No, they're, they're having some challenges, and I'm assuming as I talk to other coaches within the conference, um, when, you're, when you're trying to upload assignments, um, there are so many people logged on that sometimes the internet can crash. Um, and now you have a student saying, well, I turned in the work, or I couldn't turn in the work, and you have a, a professor saying, I sent the work, or I couldn't send out the work. So... Things like that are, are challenging. The students and the, and the instructors are all trying to be create, creative and give each one the benefit of the doubt. If, if it can't go through an upload, then we'll try emailing. Uh, we'll try doing phone calls. Um, I think the professors have been doing a great job in, in actually having Zoom classes. Um, so everybody is, is trying to do their due diligence. Um, Again, for the end, when it's over, um, everybody wants to have the efficient amount of work. Um, I'm sure the instructors want to say that they gave the work because they, they have department heads that they have to report to as well. So those are probably the biggest challenges. Um, here and there, I hear about some guys running on the track and things like that. And, you know, I don't want to say no. Again, you want to be in tip-top shape when it's time to come back, but at the same time, you want to have your health and you want to be alive. So um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword in, in talking about it, but I think in the end, safety is probably the thing that everybody in the country and probably around the world is talking about right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, what have you learned about yourself during this time? Wow. Um, that I am a better cook than I thought I was. You know, I think uh, this this week I'll, I'm going to take over some duty. Uh, and I have two, two kids that are one eight and one ten. And, uh, 
they're going to see the gourmet cook that their dad is. <laughs> All right, what's your specialty then? What you got? What's the, what you what you what you real good at? So well, what? I'm gonna take this. We we just picked up an order from from Walmart, and all of the ingredients for my best dish was not in there. So my best dish is chicken fettuccine with with chicken and shrimp, but they didn't send the fettuccine, so I got it out. You know, oh. so. It, you know, I'll, I'll be creative. I'll, I'll figure some things out. When, when in doubt, butter, when you have young butter kids. and some milk and cream. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I will try it. You, YouTube is there for a reason. It you, is. You can figure it out for you. So, so now you're Chef Boy R.D. Hill now, right? That's going to be nicknamed you now? Look, I, I look, I'm just like on the old Bill Cosby shows. I, I told my kids that I used to have a restaurant. <laughs> If they believe me, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to make the best dishes that I made in my that's restaurant. That's, so that's it. Get ready this week. Coach, you know, I become a, a a barber for a dog. Like I know how to, I know how to cut my dog up really good. He looked crazy the first yeah. day, but I watched YouTube and I figured out no, how to cut it properly. It's all, how did it, did it go? All right. He looks adorable. He's so cute. <laughs> You have he to was catchy. Initially, he was catchy, but I got it. <laughs> okay, but well, there it is. See, hidden talent that that we all have when yeah, put in I'm that situation. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. So, Clyde. Yes, ma'am. Well, we want to thank you, Coach Hill. You're in the now, right now, and now is the moment that never ends. And we appreciate everything you're doing now and moving forward. Uh, for the CIAA and what you do on campus with your young men and the entire campus of Winston-Salem State University. So thank you so much for being on the Mac Attack Show with J-Mac and Cool Mac. Thank, thank you, you very so much. It was great. You. Thanks thank for you. having me. Thank you. you take so care much. now. Take care. Go Rams. Go Rams.